Monday Night Raw took place from Performance Center tonight, and this is the go-home show to Extreme Rules, the horror show. Still have to call it that. So we started off with a show that I have to admit sucked. I, the main event was good. I liked that. But then the first 95% of the show, I just ugh, I didn't want to watch. Um, I think Raw sucks. SmackDown sucks too. NXT's great. They're great. But Raw and SmackDown suck. SmackDown's not as bad as Raw. But it was just such... It's, I don't know. It's the middle... Wrestling, even with the pandemic, it always sucks in July. July is the worst month. June, July, and then right before summer, something gets good. But summer always sucks. It does. So maybe that's it, but I don't know. I, I, it's, it's just taken its toll. It's gone to the point where you just can't watch anymore. You just want shit to go back to I want to see fucking fans, but... Yeah, the MVP VIP lounge with Dolph Ziggler. I have to skip this because I don't care. I'm sorry. I, I don't care. Uh, you had backstage, you had Charlie Caruso interview, Andrade and Angel Garza. As good as Lena Vega looks, I just don't care about these people. I'm so sick of Andrade, I'm so sick of Garza. I don't give a shit about either one of them. They're boring as hell. Andrade is boring, Garza is even more boring than Andrade. I don't care the stupid stuff of Charlie Caruso and Angel Garza. I just can't get into it. I just don't care. This stuff sucks. It really fucking does. I have an interaction with the Viking Raiders, I don't care. So yeah, had Andrade and Angel Garza against the Viking Raiders, and um, this is a tag team elimination match. As Elena was at ringside, um, they probably were just down to singles. I don't know why they said it was a stupid tag match, but um, what happens is uh, Eric's eliminated first uh, with the uh, hammerlock DDT. Uh, is Eric's the ball guy. He used to be Roe. I think Ivar's Hanson. <laughs> I don't remember their fucking names, uh, but. Uh, you had, uh, you had, um, Ivar, uh, I think he pinned, um, he pinned Gar- Garza, if I'm not mistaken, sorry, uh, I-, I think, who was it, I think, um, Ivar, uh, pinned Andrade, sorry, then, uh, Garza got the win first team, because he pinned, uh, Ivar, so, uh, they get the win, not good for the Viking Raiders, Sarah Scribber tries to interview Ruby Riot, but the Iconics and Trap told her not to bother. They reminded they beat each beat Ruby Riot, and uh, she uh, Ruby says she wants to knock them both out, and then uh, she mocks them, and they say who's going to be her tag team partner, and um, she introduces her tag team partner. She's back, the EST Bianca Belair, the best, the greatest, the. Strongest, the smartest, all the stuff. The EST. Uh, she's back, and uh, she's going to help Ruby Riot out, and her they were friends, but she'll help her out, and that's your tag match. So we got Bianca Belair back, and of course we get to see Bianca kick the shit out of the Iconic. She destroys them both, smokes them. Uh, Bian- she throws them around. Uh, she squats Billy Kay. That was pretty funny. Uh, Peyton Royce uh, got thrown out, and then uh, she destroyed them. She had a KOD on Billy Kay, and she had someone, so... Yeah, uh, got to win for Ruby. I don't know if her and Bianca are a team. I think her and Liv will still be a team. But that's all right. Uh, you had uh, her truth for... Oh, I'm going to skip over this. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I don't care about this. Um, you had... Uh, our truth and the... I have to skip that. I don't care. Our truth and the... It's a uh, We get Shayna Baszler uh, there and... Uh, she she beats up Ikira Tozawa's ninjas, and uh, she says she's been waiting patiently. She's, she's here to give everyone a hard dose of reality. I think her reality is not going to push her. I knew that would happen. I knew, all right, they're gonna, I knew it was going to happen with Shane eventually on the main roster. It's Vince, and she doesn't have much. She's not marketable. Come on, let's be real. Shane is real marketable. I don't want to be mean. She's not. She's not marketable. I mean, it's a business. She's, it's not that good. She's in a ring. She's okay. She's not great. She's not bad. Certainly, she's better than most of women, but it doesn't like the Roman final her match. I think most are boring. So they had uh, Rollins come up for a stupid promo. I, oh my god! I don't care about anything. Fuck! <laughs> I can't get myself to care. Uh, you have Alistair Black against Murphy with Seth Rollins there, and KO was in um, Rollins' side. Rollins wins, or sorry, Black wins by DQ. After Rollins interferes, and you have Kevin Owens against Seth Rollins, and this goes on for a while. You had Ray and Dominic there. I, I don't know. I've heard the story about Rick's kind of interesting. I guess, or sorry, on um, Ray, 
Ray is interesting because he's not with the company anymore on contract. He's technically just on a handshake deal. I'm sure they'll find a way to sign him, but supposedly he went to the company he wanted a raise, and they're just not giving out any raises. And uh, when they signed him back in uh, 2018, I guess it was for a lot less money than we might have thought, but he wanted more money, and this is not the time. In the pandemic, they released uh, a lot, big portion of the roster a couple months ago, so it's not going to work out, I guess, but... Um, he's on a handshake deal. I think he'll stay because Dominic. But uh, I think eventually Dominic's in the turn on uh, Ray and he'll join Seth Rollins and that'll be it for Ray. Flair speaks with the Big Show backstage. Uh, he um, he says uh, he pretty sure he said show stood over all those big men he's worked with, including Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, and Andre the Giant. However, show was picking a fight he can't win. Flair says he can't do Hollywood and just came back and just come back. Look what happened to Edge. Even The Rock hasn't come back. Flair wanted show to own the Hall of Fame healthy, not with an injury to hands of Orton. Show said Flair knew what he was trying to do. He knew Orton what had done to Edge and Christian Sight. He faced one of their friends in truth. Show wondered if Flair was going to sacrifice his friendship with just so Orton can be the legend killer. Uh, I don't think they need Flair. I like him, but he's, he's, not, he's not needed here in this time. Worst time in the world. So just don't even have him there. It's just too dangerous. And you know it's Ric Flair. He's going to say no to wrestling. Are you kidding me? He'll be dead. He'll still try to find a way to get it back on television. Good God, he'll fucking insane, this guy. They should know. It's like giving alcohol to an alcoholic. You're, what are you doing, WWE? You're such assholes. Anyway, had a rating run backstage promo. I don't care about him and Big Show. I can't get myself to care. Orin murders our truth. Of course he does. Uh, I don't care. He's ready to punt truth in Big Show's music hits. I, God, how am I going to get excited for Randy Orton in the Big Show in 2020? How? How is that possible to be fucking excited about Randy fucking Orton in the Big Fucking Show in 2020? How am I supposed to be excited about that? Uh, MVPs back so he shows his US belt to Ricochet and whatever I don't care Sarah Score tries to interview McIntyre and uh, asks him about Ziggler uh, Sarah Scooter is doing everything now I don't mind seeing Sarah Scraper, but I think uh, because Renee's sick with COVID and I think Kayla Brax I don't think I think she uh, she had a choice maybe she doesn't want to be on there because she's scared but uh, so Scraper's doing everything uh, he had Caruso there too actually he had Lashley against Ricochet. Oh, my God. How do you care about this? Charlie Cruz interviews the big show. And uh, he says uh, Orange challenged him to an unsanctioned match. And he says he accepts it. I don't care. So, finally, we get to the one thing that was good. The one thing that saved us from being the worst Raw of the year. This is probably still the worst Raw of the year. But you had the tag team championship match. You had Bailey and Sasha Banks and Undertales against Asuka and Kairi Sane. I think uh, maybe they thought oh, I'll just put filler stuff because it's a good main event. And they had a really good main event, really good tag match. All four of these women are great. Bailey's great, Sasha's great, Oscar's great, Kyrie's great. All of them are great workers. They had a damn good match up here. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun match. I thought it could go out of the way. What it surprised me is to see it go back onto the Kabuki, Kabuki Warriors. Mainly due to the fact that the Kabuki Warriors, uh, you know, I think Asuka could lose to Sasha. She could absolutely lose. I don't know. I think Asuka's going to win. But it could go to Sasha. And they might think, all right, we're going to put the titles on Bale and Sasha. We'll need the tag titles off them. They could do that. Or they could be, you know, all champs. And they go into SummerSlam, uh, all decked in gold. Um, you know, uh, they want Sasha and uh, Bailey. Um, if Sasha and Bailey were to win, it's obvious Kyrie Sane was going to get pinned. If Asuka and Kyrie were to win, we knew Asuka would have get the pin. So... You just knew, right when, right when they tag Kyrie at the end, she's losing. I don't know what's going on with her, but it was a very entertaining match. It was back and forth. It was fun. People there sold it well. They booed Bailey and Sasha, cheered Asuka, and Kyrie. I thought everyone there was good. I really enjoyed it. Last few minutes were really good. Uh, Asuka is on the other side as Bailey is, so it comes down to uh, Asuka getting Sasha, and Asuka locks Sasha gets out. Eventually, Kyrie Sane tags in. She goes uh, off. Bailey's on the other side, but she uh, she broke up a cover after Oz Kyrie hit an elbow drop on Sasha. Uh, Sane hits a flying form, an Alabama slam onto Sasha Banks. 
Then she uh, runs into Sasha, but Sasha reverses a flying sliding forearm into a bank statement, and uh, Kyrie taps out. Sasha Banks submits Kyrie saying, of course, Kyrie always loses for her team, and Bailey and Sasha Banks, still your women's tag team titles champion. So, very good main event. Bailey and Sasha retained. They continue to look good. They're really dominant. They're pushing the hell out of them. I think they're going to both get a big match soon against each other. It has to be the way they're pushing them. They're on every show. They're on everything, everywhere. Um, I think this will end after the Oscar Sasha, Oscar Sasha program's over, but they don't need to be on every show. You can just stick them on SmackDown. I think they're, they're being overexposed, but they're certainly both the MVPs. I think Sasha Banks is probably the woman wrestler of the year. I think she's been great. I think she's had a great year. I think uh, she's probably, yeah, when I do my picks at the end of the year, she's the leading candidate for it. But that was Raw. Not the greatest show. July 13th edition is just... Uh, top remember the one is the worst shows of the year. Not fun. Not entertaining. Not interesting. And uh, it's the go-home show for Extreme Rules. The horror show. This Sunday.